Here we are, thank you. So you were asking me about uh, athletes and hyperbaric oxygen therapy, because uh, we do see, of course, athletes and in, in, in the work that we do here. Um, but the hyperbaric is really exciting for athletes because it, it, it allows them to recover faster from injuries. Mm -hmm. Not only from injuries, but from training that they're doing. Uh, and then we look at not only recovery, but we also look at optimization of performance. Mm -hmm. And so to, in order to optimize performance, we need to have healthy muscles, of course, and, 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 le and less inflammation, which hyperbaric allows us to do. But we also need to be able to signal different regions of our body very quickly and send information very quickly within the brain to coordinate something as uh, optimal as possible. Mm -hmm. If I'm a hockey player and I need to, you know, the difference between, you know, getting my sick down or reacting to somebody, um, if I can increase that by 5% because my brain is functioning better, that is completely the difference between scoring a goal or getting past a defender and doing what you need to do or sticking the pass or, you know, a baseball player reading a, you know, the timing of a if I'm 5% late on my swing, it's the difference between a foul ball or, or a pop up or whatever versus very concise, really quick movement, really quick decisions and base hit, home run, whatever. So for a lot of our athletes, this is a really important type of treatment. Um, and what we want to understand, of course, is a little bit about how it works. So hyperbaric is just oxygen, increased oxygen under pressure. So you see, uh, sometimes you see a football player with an oxygen mask on the side, you know, sideline or something in the NFL, those types of things. Uh, what they're doing is just trying to get a little more oxygen in to their, their bloodstream, but they're still limited and you and I talked about this earlier, they're limited because your red blood cells are the primary way that you carry oxygen. All right, so if we look at the bloodstream here, we have these bigger red blood cells. They can carry up to four oxygen molecules, which is great, right? So when we breathe in, and you get that football player on the sideline, they're breathing in oxygen. We're getting more oxygen in the lungs when you, when you, especially when you, they, they inhale that, that uh, pure oxygen. But you're still only going to be able to absorb as much oxygen as your red blood cells allow, your blood, your blood flow allows. So when the oxygen gets in here, um, it's, this is what it looks like in, in the cell because it's attached. And you're still only limited, you're still limited by these guys. So we, we don't like, we don't wanna really limit that if we can. Um, there's, there's two ways to, in, there's, a, there's a few ways to enhance oxygen in your bloodstream. One of them is illegal, called blood doping. And that's what Lance Armstrong did. Mm -hmm. So Lance Armstrong created more red blood cells than you and I, and the, or he could naturally have at any given time, which allowed him to deliver more oxygen to his tissues mm -hmm. at any given time. So he didn't get tired as quickly. He didn't fatigue as quickly. He, his brain responded faster. He didn't, he didn't mentally quit on himself, you know, all those types right. of things. The other way is legal and appropriate and something we use in rehab and therapy all the time, and that's called hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So hyperbaric, what hyperbaric does is hyperbaric doesn't do anything with the red blood cells. It doesn't care about the red blood cells. Because hyperbaric, because of the pressure, oxygen is actually dissolved into the plasma or the fluid of our blood and, and goes from a gas to a liquid state. And if you remember your physics from college or high school, you can look, look up Boyle's and Henry, Henry's Law and those types of things. Not only does it do that, it also decreases their size. So the actual size of the molecule even gets a little smaller, which is really cool. Until you take somebody out of pressure, then it expands. So, so now we still have the, ox the red blood cells carrying oxygen, but now we have all these other little oxygen molecules freely floating in there, which can then distribute 
through the entire body. The brain, all the muscles, all our organs, our heart, like everything, everywhere. And so we're not limited by our red blood cell capacity and our blood flow. Mm -hmm. Now we have, we have oxygen molecules in our lymphatic system. We have it in our cerebral spinal fluid. We have it, of course, in our, in our blood. All of these areas, any kind of, any kind of fluid, we go from a, we can, we, oxygen can disseminate into, or, or uh, diffuse into, and disseminate through the body. Mm -hmm. So now, athletes aren't getting as tired. You know, fatigue is decreased. Um, our brain is, is functioning better. Uh, we're sending signals from our brain to our body at a faster rate. We're processing information that's coming in at a faster rate, which then communicates down through here. So it's, you gotta think about this loop. Mm -hmm. So just like, you know, this, and this cut keeps getting information, kind of jumps in at different areas, right? If I'm, a, if I'm a boxer and somebody, I see somebody do something, I need to be able to move really quickly mm -hmm. so that I don't get clipped in the face. Um, if I'm a boxer and I want to land a stiff jab, I gotta be able to do that really quick, quicker than another guy can react. And if that other guy or, or you know, is, is really talented, they might, you know, they might, they might be able to get out of the way. Or from a baseball player, same thing, I need to react to that pitch. When I see that pitch come out of that, that uh, pitcher's hand, I need to be able to figure out, is that a curveball? Is, is that a slider? Is that a fastball? Is that a uh, changeup? And so I'm gonna make the correct, uh, process the information so I make the correct uh, adjustment or a golfer, you know, any of these types of things, any sport, any mm -hmm. sport. Um, so, and then we get into talking about inflammation. And so inflammation with athletes is extremely important because what we do when we, when athletes use their, their bodies at that rate of, of exercise, right? They create a lot of waste materials and they create a lot of inflammation. And that waste materials, thankfully the hyperbaric does, is that it increases not only the oxygen concentration of these, but it increases the flow of all these. So it increases the rate of flow of any tissue, of any fluid. So we actually get more detoxification occurring, which is really cool. So we get increased detoxification, we get increased cerebral spinal fluid flow, which bathes the brain and heals the brain within, you know, with any inflammation, removes toxins or delivers, uh, you know, nutrients and, and, and things that it needs. And it just increases blood flow and pushes oxygen deeper into our tissue. So we actually get oxygen, not only to our tissues faster and at a, at a better rate, but it actually pushes it deeper into our tissues because once, you know, red blood cells or uh, blood vessels, it's important to understand this concept that, that blood vessels only take things so far. And then what happens is the materials diffuse out into, let's say the muscle or the brain tissue. And if they only have a range of this far, that's, you know, one thing. And you're, you're, so that's how you're kind of dependent on some of your blood vessel formation, but if they can reach out this far, then we have a greater range that we're affecting our tissues with and, and we're less limited by our blood flow again. Right. Really important concept that we didn't touch on earlier, but this is really cool. And so when we look at these people, we wanna say, well, that's well and good, Mac, but what about inflammation? And so what happens with hyperbaric is that we actually get uh, vasoconstriction which occurs to help uh, regulate the inflammation. And we get increased oxygen with that vasoconstriction. Now, usually when we get vasoconstriction or blood vessels constrict or get smaller, we limit the bigger blood vessels from, uh, from being able to get that far into it. So as these get smaller and smaller, as they get further into our tissue, these bigger red blood cells may not be able to sneak any further in. They just can't get any further. But these oxygen molecules, which are much tinier, can. So we get to decrease inflammation while increasing oxygenation, which is an incredible recipe for function and healing. So this is how we heal, one of the ways we heal. Really, really important. 
when we're, when we're increasing our metabolic rate and straining our bodies at that level because we have to be able to reproduce it. That's what training is, right? Mm -hmm. When we train at these high levels, we have to be able to train and heal and train again and heal and train, make adjustments just like we do in the brain. Right. And then God forbid if you get concussions or head injuries from it, the same mechanism heals your brain. So the same mechanism will heal your brain, which is really cool. So I treat a lot of, as you know, we treat a lot of boxers mm -hmm. and, and uh, mixed martial artists and hockey players and all kinds of things. Uh, and these guys are having concussions. They may, they're not having even these high level concussions. They're having these sub threshold kind of below uh, problematic concussions that we, uh, we wouldn't call them a concussion, but let's say impact, impact affecting um, the, 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 the structures. Mm -hmm. And so we want to create this general healing to occur throughout that so that the brain gets back to function and it doesn't continue to get to a point where then it just one little tap and the person's can't handle anymore um, or whatever sport it might be. So really cool football, of course, is another one of those examples mm -hmm. to treat football players with concussions, but just from healing perspective, um, really great. And uh, uh, I imagine Tom Brady has one. I'm sure. Tom Brady, if you're watching, you're happy to help. So, <laughs> come back to us. Thank you.